Hi everybody, my name is Jeremiah, and I'm the Systems Librarian at Eastern Oregon University. Welcome to this series on building and implementing a self-hosted instance of Omeka. These videos were designed with librarians at other small academic institutions in mind, but may also be helpful for other institutions, like public libraries or historical societies that are interested in building a digital archive or repository. You don't need to be a systems expert to implement Omeka, but certain aspects of it may be intimidating to those with basic computer skills. My intent here is to guide those who have basic computing skills and are willing to learn basic server administration through the process of implementing Omeka. As such, I won't assume that viewers are familiar with command line computing and will try to explain what the various Linux commands we are using do. In fact, my hope is this series will be helpful for those who are building their first system. In exploring the various options for hosting the Eastern Oregon University Digital Archives, I also built test instances using Islandor and DSpace. These were both great systems, but we chose Omeka because it's powerful enough to support our needs without the back-end complexity. My own personal conclusion was that as the sole systems librarian maintaining a number of open source systems here at EOU, Omeka would be a lot easier and less time consuming to maintain and troubleshoot. At the moment, we are not storing large data sets or research publications for faculty. Instead, our needs lie more in making digital scans and audio recordings of archival materials accessible online. If we were creating an institutional repository with a larger scope, I might consider DSpace or Islandora, or even more likely Semvera, which was originally called Hydra. I won't go into further details about these, as it's outside the scope of this series, but you can learn about all of these systems by following the URLs on your screen. So of the possibilities out there that are compliant with Open Archives Initiative Protocol for metadata harvesting and the ability to import or export encoded archival descriptions, Omeka appears to be one of the easiest to build, implement, and maintain. If you're not familiar with OAI or EAD, it's probably worth your while to check out the websites on your screen. They're important to know about in the world of digital archives, but for the purposes of this video, just know that any online digital archive or repository should support both, which Omeka does. Before we get to building an Omeka instance, I want to set the stage a little better. Here is the Omeka website at omeka.org. First I want to point out the forums. There are a lot of knowledgeable users here and this forum has been a valuable resource when I've had questions. When you get the chance, you should come back, click around, and explore on your own. For now, let's go back and click on the documentation link found up here. In this section, we have links to all kinds of important information. We'll be looking mostly at preparing to install, installation, and hosting suggestions. I want to point out that there are many ways to do this implementation, but as I mentioned at the start, I'm making these videos with other academic libraries in mind. Therefore, I'm assuming you have an IT department that will accommodate your request for server space on their network. We'll be using Secure Shell, or SSH, which allows you to communicate from your desktop to the server over an unsecured network using a command line interface. If you're using a Windows desktop, you'll need an SSH client like PuTTY, which you'll find here at PuTTY.org. The download process is pretty easy. All you need to do is click on the here link, and you'll be given Windows installer options for both 32-bit and 64-bit systems. It's important you pick the right one, so if you're unsure of which version you're running, the best way to do that, to figure out what it is, is to go to your um, folder here and then right click on computer and click properties and here you'll find what sort of operating system you're running in my case it's a 64-bit operating system so in that case I would click on this link here and the installation process would begin I'm not going to do that for this video. There are plenty of videos out there that can show you how to do this, but it's a pretty straightforward process and you shouldn't run into any problems. 
If you're using an Apple or Linux product, you should be able to use SSH using the terminal. For example, here is an instance of Ubuntu. If I right click on the desktop, I can select the terminal from the drop down menu. Using this terminal, I can SSH into any server uh, that I have access to. So in my case, I've created uh, another instance of Omeka on a test server, and I will attempt to SSH into that server. To do that, I type SSH, the username for that server, at the server name, And now it'll ask for my password. There is a chance you'll get a message warning you that um, it may not be a secure connection. In all likelihood, you don't have to worry about that, and you would just type in yes. I have already SSH'd into this server using this terminal uh, beforehand, uh, but at this moment, I, I am now logged in to that server uh, using, using the SSH command line. If you're using a Mac and you're unsure how to open the terminal, do a Google search for how to open it. There's no generic shortcut or hotkey that I'm aware of, so you need to navigate through the Applications folder to the Utilities folder and find the terminal there. Or you could use a Spotlight search. Regardless of what operating system you're using, I will be using an SSH terminal to build Omeka. If you were not familiar with command line computing, I recommend you get the basics down by taking the Learn Command Line course at Code Academy. If you go to the Code Academy website at www.codeacademy.com, you'll be brought to the landing page. Um, if you click on Catalog, you'll get a list of various courses that they offer. We want to click on the bash shell and learn the command line. This co course will provide enough training to make you more comfortable with the command line and will help you out in this series as we as we go from video to video. You don't need to be an expert to install Omeka, but it would be helpful to have uh, command line basics down. If your IT department isn't able to provide you with a server on their domain, um, third-party hosting is another option. I won't be covering a lot of that uh, in this series, uh, but Omeka does have uh, some suggestions as to what third parties you might use. Um, they have it under the in the document documentation page. There's the preparing to install link, and uh, under here, what if I do not have access to LAMP? We'll talk about what a LAMP server is uh, in, in future videos. Uh, but for now, um, try third-party hosting services. Here are some suggestions. We'll click on that. And we get a list of uh, vendors that offer uh, shared hosting, um, some of which offer one-click installations, uh, which uh, should make things much easier. Um, I don't think there's a problem with third-party hosting, but I suspect you'll have less control over your server. My understanding is you can SSH into a shared server hosted by a third party, but I suspect the directory is much different and might not sync up with the process I intend to show. So if you go this route for hosting, I'm not completely certain that this series will be helpful. I've not done an installation using a third-party hosting option. Perhaps if I get enough requests to do so, I'll add a video that covers that at some point. Um, but for now, um, just know that if you go this route, um, it, it may not be the same. Uh, what you're seeing in this video series may not be the same. Um, I am going to cover options on how to build a test server using a virtual machine. Uh, so you may be able to go that route, but the thing is people won't be able to access it outside of your network. So for the end of this introductory video, I wanted to show you an example of what I've built using Omeka on a test server. Uh, it's the same test server that I had uh, just SSH'd into. 
It takes some web development skills to customize it the way you want, but if you're familiar with CSS and HTML and it helps to know a little bit of PHP, you can essentially make your pages look however you want. Um, so this this is our uh, test instance of, of the um, archive that, that we'll be building um, in this series. Um, as you can see, uh, you know, you have all sorts of uh, tools at your disposal. Um, like I said, if you know CSS and HTML, you can, you can build just about anything you want. Um, here we're showcasing uh, the photo collections that um, are really kind of the forefront of our digital archives. Um, it's a pretty minimalist installation. Um, we can browse by items. We can browse by collections. Uh, not all of our collections have been populated as it's a, a test instance. Um, we can uh, enter search terms. We have uh, more advanced search options. So we can uh, narrow by specific fields, um, ID numbers. Uh, we can search by collection. Uh, so these are essentially uh, just facets you can put onto your search. Um, very simple, uh, but very effective uh, for uh, some of our, our smaller digital archives collections. I do think it's a good idea to build a test instance before trying to implement a live site. Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to do that using VirtualBox, which allows you to create virtual computers on your physical computer. This will give you practice with building a server from the ground up. You can then use this virtual server to build your instance of Omeka. The process is something that you can do even without server space on your network. All you need is a computer with admin privileges. Installing Omeka on this test server would be almost identical to building on a production server provided by your IT department. You can actually use this test server as we go through the series rather than build a production environment. I'll see you in the next video.